you know, my husband and I have been married for 37 years and he is a leader in landmark education and we really live a life of transformation and conversations every day. Like, what are we up to? What are we committed to? What has integrity? What doesn't? Really bringing the distinctions that we've worked on for so many years to our everyday lives. That's Nancy Eden and this is the Powerful Ladies Podcast. Hey guys, I'm your host, Cara Duffy, and this is the Powerful Ladies Podcast, where I invite my favorite humans, the awesome, the up to something, and the extraordinary to come and share their story. I hope that you'll be left entertained, inspired, and moved to take action towards living your most powerful life. Nancy Eaton is one of my favorite humans. She and her family are so warm, inviting, supportive, and successful. The success they experience shows up across their lives is abundance in friendships, making an impact in business, and most of all, in curating a life that is filled with intention and purpose. You meet them and instantly know something is different. They have this life thing figured out. On this episode, Nancy shares the hard work and steps she's put in place to create her charmed life, how you can have that too, and why the parts of our life we often ignore are the parts that actually make all the difference for having everything we dream of. All that and so much more is coming up, but first. Yogazama 200 hour teacher training is the introductory program offered by the Lisby School. It's a psychotherapeutic yoga teacher program that takes traditional yoga and seeps it in scientific tea. Yoga plus brain science equals a whole new level of access to mental health and human optimization. While you're learning the yoga poses, breathing techniques, Ayurveda, meditation, and mantras, of a traditional yoga teacher training, you'll also be learning the brain science, neurobiology, and psychology behind why it works and how you can bioengineer a practice or protocol to transform stress, anxiety, sadness, and more. In the same way you would use an essential oil or go for a run or take a hot bath to change your emotional state, in this course, you will learn scientifically proven mind-body techniques to level up yourself or your clients. I just completed my Yogazama 200 certification, and I thought this class would be for my own personal development. And yet, as a business coach, I've used something I've learned every week with my clients. Imagine what you could do with this training. I cannot recommend this program enough. Sign up now to save your space in the 2021 programs and to qualify for 20% off early bird discount pricing. Special bonus, I'll be teaching the business lesson So you'll know how to create either a new business or level up your existing business with your new skills. Visit thelispyschool.com, L-I-S-P-Y, and sign up today. Spots are limited. I'll also include a link in the show notes within this episode. Well, Nancy, welcome to the Powerful Ladies Podcast. Hi, Kara. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. So let's begin by telling everybody who you are and what you are up to in the world. Well, first of all, I just want to say thank you for um, having me on the podcast. I love powerful ladies. I love what you're up to. And it is such um, a neat space to be able to go to and for resources for you for making a difference and just all around extraordinary. So I'm super happy to be here and talking with you about what I do and what I love. And um, I'm just really thrilled. So thank you. Um, My pleasure. Thank you for coming. um, I think um, the way I would introduce myself would be to like really say I'm up to being a really powerful lady myself and sharing what I know, what I love and what I do with others is just such a great expression of myself. And I love what I do. I love being with people. I love making a difference and creating my company with you, Kara, has been a real joy for me. Um, Nancy Eaton Inspired Living came about last year, last fall, when, um, I don't know, I was looking in my life, what I was going to do next. And this, you know, the way I live my life is inspired. The way people are and like to be with me and it just seemed to make sense. And I was looking for why that was. And I knew there was this foundation of um, 
it, it was, I had a space in which I could create and have friends, relationships, and not only have that be great, but also have people in my home and have them experience the same thing. And I wanted to give that away. What I found after I did the uh, Marie Kondo certification class is that that is just such a gift. The process of tidying one's home up is really about tidying one's life up. Um, and it just really gives people access to joy and a life that is transformed and through the process of going through your stuff, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's crazy, but it really gives people a sense of who they are. They get choice back. They get back um, their life and what they're up to. And they, you know, this whole empty, like art, you could just create your whole life after you're done with the process. And it's a great, great, inspiring thing. So that's where I started my business. And Paris mm -hmm. really helped me in formulating that and bringing it to people. That, I, I know you forgot that question. <laughs> <laughs> no, you answered it completely and fully. Um, you know, and for people who don't know, what what is the what is Marie Kondo? What is the KonMari process? What is what is all of that? So people can have some foundation. Um, Marie Kondo is a gal. She wrote a book several years ago, "The Life Changing Magic of Tidying Up." It is, I think, it sold over nine million copies in every country in the world, um, she developed a process of um, decluttering, really, of going through your items in a process. Um, you learn to make choices. You choose what brings you joy and you let go of the, the past, the rest of the thing, items that are just cluttering your life, you let go of them. And you start with, it's a, it's a basic formula of starting with clothing. You'll go through your clothes. Then we'll move on to books and then paper and then what she calls kimono, which is miscellaneous. And then by the end of the process, you'll come to what is called sentimental. And during the whole process of decluttering, a lot of things get recategorized into that process, into that category of sentimental. And then you have a lot of uh, experience with letting go and you'll go through your sentimental, sentimental items to finish it up. Mm -hmm. I think it's such a, a magical process. Um, I read the book when it came out ages ago and, and having had my own organizing business many years ago, um, I really saw and experienced firsthand the impact of what our stuff has on us and not just our physical things, but then the space that those things take up or the energy that's being created in those spaces. And I'm a big believer in just like you need to look at mind, body, spirit to optimize yourself. You also need to look at, you know, how your things are taking up space physically, mentally, spiritually as well. Yeah. And, and it that can energy change. keeps going, it keeps going outflowing to things that you no longer are interested in. It leaves no space for you to create something new, something new mm -hmm. to show up in your life because you're so busy holding on to the past or those things that no longer serve you. I was with a client in Texas a couple weeks ago, and one of the first things we did, I actually do uh, Joy at Work also, which is mm -hmm. um, working with people in their offices. And now that we are all at home working in our offices, it's very important to have a space that really serves you. So um, one of the processes we call Joy at Work, which is her new book, Marie Kondo's new book. Um, we start with books because there's mm -hmm. supposedly no clothes in your office unless it's in your bedroom <laughs> I guess but <laughs> we started with books with this client and I one of the things we do is we take the covers off of the books um as we go through them and we were talking about the energy that those covers on a book it's all marketing it's all words and it just grabs so much of your life from you and mm -hmm. that simple little cover she goes oh my gosh I'm done this is it this is I'm like this is I got everything I need <laughs> <laughs> she was so happy about it but it's that what you're talking about it's about you giving your energy to things that no longer serve you it's great. Well, and, and i love that for for you this business is more than than the tidying festival right because it really is this whole transformation of who you get to be and what your household gets to be right like um we've started the process in in our house and just little things like giving away books that I wasn't going to read and were making me feel guilty for not reading. Like you don't realize how you walk past these things every day 
And whether you pay attention to them or not, they're having an impact on you, just like people do in the world. And to, you know, have clarity in your space, you know, it, it really does free up, as you said, space to create whatever you want next or just to attract what you want back into your life. Um, I feel like it brings yeah. mindfulness into that, Kara. It's yes. really about being mindful and mindfully choosing what you have. Mm-hmm. You know, that, yeah. and that's like this whole other level. Like you got this foundation of having what you love in your life, but then you're conscientious and you're mindful in your new choices that you also make. And and Nancy Eaton Inspired Living is just about having an inspired life. So I'm looking at 2021, like, what does that look like expanding? um, You know, what do you, okay, you like, you're out in the world, you come home and your house is like the serene place that opens its arms and gives you a big fat hug. You walk in the door and you're home. You're like safe and you're, you know, it's like Mm -hmm. serving you. It gives you everything you need, but then you open your pantry and there's, sugar, right? You know, everything that's not really serving you sitting there. So it's also Mm -hmm. like, what are you eating? Um, You know, what are you doing physically? What are you doing, Mm -hmm. you know, in all these different areas? So your whole life becomes like this inspired, really elevated experience. Well, and, and as someone who is all about optimizing, there's something really refreshing about knowing that there are just some simple steps to follow that don't require these, you know, I don't need to spend bajillion dollars to go to a Tony Robbins seminar to <laughs> have my life change. Right. I can, I can call you and we can tidy the house and tidy the, the refrigerator and tidy, basically tidy with intention, mm-hmm. some key areas of my life and things will shift. And there's a lot less discipline involved in that process, which to me is really refreshing because so often it feels like to live the life you want to have, it's going to be about pain and suffering when none of that shows up in your business or your processes. Yeah. Um, I do. I, I don't think there's pain in my process, but <laughs> <laughs> I think it becomes challenging for people. I do. Mm-hmm. I believe, you know, I've, I've had clients that have very large homes and they have an amazing amount of things in their mm-hmm. homes and it can be somewhat overwhelming. And mm-hmm. it's not painful. It's just overwhelming. And you kind of are swimming in it, which was really great that you have a consultant there mm-hmm. because you hold their hand <laughs> and you're there to keep them motivated, keep them. Um, well, one of the first things we do in our process is we create this ideal life, how you would envision your life. Like, what does that look like? What does that feel like? What are you doing? What's in your home? Those kind of conversations, we create the story together. Um, and we're always referring back to that. So then when there is an overwhelm, there is like, oh my gosh, there's, I just can't like go, um, mm-hmm. we're back to that. We get what we said we were committed to, and we bring that to the table and we just keep on going. And it's amazing what people can do, you know, once mm-hmm. they've got a partner. <laughs> yeah. And, and what I think is so uh, important about you specifically, like hiring Nancy Eaton Inspired Living versus any other KonMari consultant is that you are so much more than a KonMari consultant, mm. right? You have this background in running businesses in the in the past and being entrepreneurial. You have this experience of being, going through really high level leadership training at Landmark where you understand the transformation process. You know what it looks like to create a life based on intention and choice and to keep rebuilding it. And there's just so many more parts of, of you, both as an example of what it looks like to live an inspired life, but also really getting how to help people not just tidy up, but truly have a transformation. Um, how do you see that, like helping your clients fully cross the finish line to experience what inspired means? Um, I think, um, I'm just thinking back to a few of my amazing clients. Um, the joy at work is like really fun for me because it's a very, it's a specific area. It's a specific thing we're doing. And I have left clients and they're like, wow, I just got $4 million of business in since we've Mm -hmm. tidied my office and made it beautiful. And, you know, um, we completed that process or, um, somebody will tell me, you know, the complete change in how they're being in their own space. And that translates into how they're being with their clients. Uh, it's like, it's concrete, which I really like. 
um, mm-hmm. to have that. Um, other people uh, working in a tidy festival with this really large home. Um, the gal was just like, you know, I want to have, you know, a million dollars in my um, a retirement account by the time we're done. And, you know, she's 60% of the way there. And it's three months later. And I'm just like, how? Wow, that is a great result to produce. But so everything mm-hmm. is like, like, there's a feeling component of it. There's a transformational, unpredictable thing that can happen in it. And there's all these concrete things that happen also. Res- results being produced in a way that's unpredictable. And mm-hmm. something that, you know, once people have, they, you know, well, you'll always put your scissors back if you have those kind of results. <laughs> yeah. It's easy to remember why you're doing it when you're seeing results showing up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Was, was your life always one of, of inspiration and transformation? Like, how did you get to both ha- having the life that you have today, but also that being a priority for you to give to others? Um, well. Uh, I kind of laugh because my dad was in the Navy. It was always ship shape at my house. You know, things were pretty put away and tidied and there were lists to um, accomplish. And I thank my dad for that. Um, but as far as uh, transformation and the intentionality in that department, you know, my husband and I have been married for 37 years and he is a leader in landmark education and really we really live a life of transformation and conversations every day. Like, what are we up to? What are we committed to? What, you know, what has integrity? What doesn't um, really bring in the distinctions that we've worked on for so many years to our everyday lives. So, um, yeah, I think that answered the question. No, that was perfect. Yeah. Um, and then how... What is it about that work and how you've experienced it your, both for yourself and for people in your life where you're like, okay, this works and I want to be spreading this to other people? Um, wow. Because I think, I, well, let me break that down a little bit. Because I think some of the things we're saying, like transformation and living inspired, like some people listening might be like, I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm just trying to pay the bills and survive. <laughs> like, like, how do I, how can I take baby steps into that? And so- for somebody that these are foreign concepts to, um, how would you how would you break it down, or how would you give them some a bridge to get to where they are today to what we're talking about? Good question, Kara. Um, I would, um, I mean, I think integrity probably is one conversation you could have with an individual that has never done any classes or work or personal um, um, work for themselves. Um, this the conversation integrity with you know something being whole and complete and without you know Richard and I talk about the bicycle um, a lot and when if you think about a bicycle and a tire if one of the spokes is bent it's not going to be you can't ride the bike it's the same thing in life when if your wheel is bent if something's bent you can't ride the you know you can't ride the bike the way you normally would it doesn't lack it doesn't have integrity because it's not whole and complete. So I think I think having conversations about integrity and what that allows for when I have integrity in my home and um, I've gone through the process in my house and, you know, from time to time it gets out of control and I put things back. I have a little tidying session with myself and everything goes back and I bring integrity to my space. So I think that's something I can share with my clients that um, is of real value. And they can mm-hmm. find themselves empowered in getting their space cleaned up and flat. Yeah, and I and I can speak from experience as well of when things in my life aren't working, and it feels like I'm you know fighting uphill, and everything's just harder and more complicated and more emotional and every like there's just all the stuff like you feel the weight of it. Mm-hmm. That to me is always a sign to go back to, um, you know, what's called the integrity checklist of, okay, what am I not handling? That might seem so unrelated, but because it's not taken care of, it's taking up, it's robbing space of what I'm trying to make happen. And so things that often end up on an integrity checklist are like, is your car washed? Is it clean? Um, You know, it's just basic tidy things. Are there, is there somebody that you owe a phone call to or an email you haven't done? Is there a bill you haven't paid? Like all the things that we think 
don't matter very much in life. I think that's one of the, the big secrets of people who are experiencing success and abundance is that those things, they don't matter from a significance perspective, but they do matter in, um, like death by a thousand paper cuts. Um, <laughs> you have to like handle the little things in order to really have space to handle the big things. Cause even though they're tiny, they'll suddenly add up and they're taking up all the room that you need for that new client. And you know, it's so um, frustrating because my, they're dumb little things. <laughs> my kids will call me and they'll mm-hmm. say, blah, 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 blah. And I'll go, you know, and they're like, what's going on in the what coaching? And I'll say, oh, I think you better write an integrity checklist. Something's off with you. You There's something you're not handling. Something, Something's incomplete. Something you, know, something you need to say to somebody. Um, something you're withholding. Something's up. And, you know, lo and behold, they'll get off the phone. They'll call me back an hour later and go, oh, thank you, mom. I, I handled my whole thing. Thanks a lot. And, you know, whatever mm-hmm. with the problem is no longer a problem anymore. And I really appreciate that about them. They're, they're awesome kids and they're really smart, too. They get their get their integrity back in. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I guess people who are listening, you know, make your own integrity checklist. What are the things that you know you're supposed to handle or avoiding and give, or avoiding? Yes. Yeah. And that could be people, things to do, feelings. Yeah. You name it. And if you have questions about this, please send me a note. Cause this is actually a really profound, big thing that I want you guys to get, um, or bring it to the next, um, you know, workshop or thrive conversation too. Um, if we look back at eight-year-old you, what did eight-year-old you imagine your life would be like and how far or close is it to what your life is like today? Well, I, I'm not sure if it's eight-year-old, but at some point I really wanted to be Diana Ross and I wanted to sing on stage and have pretty dress and really big hair, (laughs) but I don't think that's happening given, you know, what we just talked about my Thanksgiving, um, (laughs) <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I was the kind of gal that loved to color. I loved art. I would color really hard, bright colors, and then I'd outline them in black and get them all like squared away, you know, so everything it was in its place. Um, so art, I really, really am creative. And I find that in my life, I use my food, my wine, my entertaining, my, mm-hmm. um, making it home. Um, and being with people as that artistic expression for myself, mm-hmm. and I color from time to time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I'm well, always a very social girl too. I always like mm-hmm. like the kids. I love to be with my brothers. I love you know the whole family aspect. So that is perfect for me. Yes, and for anyone who's never had the pleasure, uh, an event at the Eaton's house is the best event you get to go to. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> It, it's true. I mean, the, it's the you bring to life exactly what you're teaching others to do through inspired living of, you know, how to create a space that is really welcoming and encourages conversation and community. And how can food do that? And how can um, the people you bring into that space add to that as well? And I love that you um, offer teaching people how to do that if they want to add that on to how you're helping them. Like, you get to bring, you have such a great eye as well. So mm-hmm. like when we do my house, it's not like just KonMari. I'm like, uh, we're going to need help with everything. So what do you <laughs> see that I don't see? How do we, how do we make this look better now that all the things in here are things I want? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great. You know, in the KonMari process, a lot of times we'll find something that's been hidden away that is really important to somebody. They still have it and they choose to keep it. It brings them joy. And we bring those type of things out of the closet and we actually try to find a way to display them in which the joy is an everyday experience rather than every 10 mm-hmm. years you find it and go, oh, that was great. Um, I um, did a lot of work with my own mom. Um, she had this silver set with these um, oil and vinegar things in it. It's not very antique. And you know there was a couple of them gone, but whatever. So I found it. It was in the laundry room above the washer and dryer in this ba- plastic basket. I got to get rid of that. I got to get something or other. We brought it out, shined it up, and we put it in a little cabinet in her living room. And she sees it every day now. And it's really mm-hmm. important for her. It, it was a family thing, you know, something's very sentimental. And now she gets to enjoy it all the, all the time. So we do do find those things that are important to people and bring them out. 
And also we just always leave things beautiful and create little vignettes and very um, beautifully, you know, just like your, your, your every day becomes joyful because there's pretty mm-hmm. things around you. And it says who you are and reminds you like when you're off, like, oh, oh, that's who I am. And you get to physically mm-hmm. see it and it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. So it's a really fun thing to do. That's a fun part of my job. Well, another thing that I know you're very passionate about is CASA. Do you want to tell people what CASA is and why that matters to you? Yeah, you know, I started doing fundraising for my kids' school. They approached me to do the, do the gala thing. And I was like, going, what? Whoa, okay. And it was like the first time I really stepped out and became like bigger, just like stepped into that shoes, those kind of bigger shoes. And um, it was interesting. I went into the front office and the director of the school goes, sits down and she's, I chose these other two co-chairs and she says, well, we just need you to raise about anything over $250,000. And I'm like going, oh, I left that meeting going, holy crap. I mean, <laughs> what are we going to do? <laughs> so we started planning and organizing people, which I love to do. I love to work with people for a good cause. And we, I mean, we made like double that. It was an extremely good year for the the school. And that started my um, interest in nonprofits and making a difference through inviting people to use the money in a really powerful way intentionally. Mm-hmm. And it, it taught me a lot. And I got very interested in this CASA. And CASA stands for Court Appointed Special Advocate. And they are an incredible organization, very well run by very neat people. They, um, what they do is they recruit, train, and manage volunteers from our community in Orange County. And they pair these volunteers to be advocates for a child that's in foster care. And these foster care kids, they are in trouble. They need, mm-hmm. they need, they need a guide. They need somebody to care about them for no reason other than they held up their hand. And mm-hmm. they know that person's there for no reason other than they said so. So there's this relationship you, that they establish. There's parameters. You're court appointed. You have to go through 30 hours of training. The court, uh, the judge comes in and, you know, blesses you and tells you you're good <laughs> here in, in, the, in the club. Um, and then you are paired with the child and they could be any age and you can ask them what age you want to, you know, be paired with. But um, at the end, you go out into the community and you advocate for them if they need a certain help in math, you find a tutor, you get their, you know, therapist involved, you get their social worker, you get to know everybody that's around them. And you kind of grease the slide for them to be important and make a difference in the world and be somebody. And I think the one of the most important things that I can point to statistically is that if you have a CASA, if you're a foster kid, you probably won't graduate from high school. If you have a CASA, 90, I don't know, two, three, percent will graduate from high school. It's incredible the difference it makes if you have a a high school diploma. And um, I was lucky enough to get a gal um, that was just uh, changed high schools and she's young and, you know, uh, she's out of the system now. She's 22 and she's very important to me and we really hit it off and she's just so coachable and so, you know, she works two jobs. She's going to you know, community college. She's on her own. It was a really remarkable person and really stepped up because I said, you know what, you're important. Mm -hmm. And that's what CASA does. It really gives a kid a chance. Um, Mm -hmm. Most of the foster kids will end up in, you know, uh, really bad uh, uh, places, uh, either in jail or in sex trade. Um, You know, it's really interesting, but it's the organization that can make or break a kid. So and I'm this really organization proud to be a part of that. No, I and I am so proud of of the work that you've done uh, yourself as a casa, but also in helping um, them fundraise every year to keep the organization right. going and to to really be an advocate for casa as much as for your own, um, you know, foster yeah. appointee. Kara, I got to tell you, people are so generous. Um, we've been. I, I was you know, fundraising with them for uh, over the last 10, I don't know, long time. And mm-hmm. we've done galas, we've done everything. But when we go to the community and we say, these kids need help, we need you to help us, they would raise their hand with like buckets full of money. And I just, I can't 
even thank them enough to have faith in the organization to get the job done. Because it really mm-hmm. is a lot about trust and trusting the organization's good, that they spend their money wisely, and they're doing a good job at the end of the day. And, I, mm-hmm. and it's really, I also used to laugh, it's like the most bang for the buck you could ever donate. You know, you get, there's so yeah. much. If you think about putting money in for a kid, um, before they go to jail, you know how much money we spend on people that go to jail? You mm-hmm. get that kid, stay, have that kid stay out of jail. If you get a kid before they fail high school, do you how much money it's going to save the country? I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's a really good bargain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot of controversy sometimes with different charity organizations. Mm-hmm. And to your point, like this is a great example to donate, to support people who want a way to support themselves. Yes. You know, this, this, this isn't a stay in the cycle and you never get out of the cycle type of a program. This really is a, we're going to get you out of the cycle program right? and, and make you not a statistic, which I know that anyone that's ever been involved in CASA has been, has been moved and changed because of it. Even people who have shown up to, to these uh, events. So, yeah. um, I think it's such a cool organization. It is available nationwide in different places. So you can, anyone listening can find the CASA organization, um, in your local area. Um, and I'm just shocked at the statistics of how many people are in foster care. We have uh, so, about, I'd say about 2,500 kids in Orange County. And we have, I'm, these are estimates right now because I don't have the exact number. Probably there's 600 advocates. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we can always use more advocates. And we have a 30-hour training, online um, training session that you can do now through Zoom. So that's mm-hmm. really great. Um, it's a little more difficult with uh, COVID and the rules of seeing your kid at this time, but you can still advocate for them. You know, you still can, you know, talk to people and make a difference. Um, mm-hmm. And you can Zoom with them too. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure a big thing is just making sure right now that they have a laptop and they have internet. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. how many foster kids don't? Um, <sighs> yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm really proud of uh, Kendra's, my, my daughter's um, friends. A lot of them have taken on being CASAs, being advocates, which is really neat. Uh, I just, a lot of people in, in, in our world have just really raised up their hand and making a difference. So I invite all of y'all to find out about them. CASA.org, CASAOC.org for here, but anywhere. You can find it nationwide, like Kara said. Mm-hmm. So thank you for letting me share about that, Kara. It's really important to me. Um, You're welcome. Love those guys. Well, when you think about powerful ladies as individual words and together, what does it mean to you and um, how does it change your life thinking about yourself as a powerful lady? Um, wow, that's a really great question because I really, I noticed this is a breakthrough I've had in the last couple of weeks, just to tell you the truth. <laughs> and I noticed that a lot of times that when people um, pay a compliment to me, that I have this thought in the back of my head, like, oh, they really don't know, or yeah, they don't know what they're talking about, or they're just they're just trying to be nice or something when they're telling me personally. And I was like, wow, what is that? I mean, what, what, who am I like to listen to people in that way? And I started really doing a little investigation, a little transformation work for myself after all these years. Mm -hmm. And I'm, and I looked to see that I was not being responsible for who I am as a powerful woman and Mm -hmm. that it lacked integrity to disregard people's um, acknowledgements. And really, I have a lot to um, contribute. I have, I'm a powerful person. And really being responsible for that is something I've just had a breakthrough in recently. Mm-hmm. I'm really excited about it. So when I look around and I see powerful ladies, I'm just like, wow, you know, I want to be like that. And I like check out what they're doing. I read about them. I find out, you know, where they've been. What, was their, what were the struggles? How did they get where they are? Mm-hmm. How can I learn from them? Uh, yeah, I don't know if that answered your question, but there you go. <laughs> well, what is, how would you define powerful, powerful ladies? Um, wow. Uh, that's a good question. I, let me think about that for one second. Mm-hmm. So when somebody is a powerful lady, 
I think they're being responsible for who they are and mm -hmm. contributing that to other people, contributing mm -hmm. what they have powerfully in a way that makes a difference and makes a difference in the, for themselves and for the people around them and for our community. Mm -hmm. When you look back at your life, what are moments when you have realized the power that you actually have and had probably always had? Mm -hmm. um, I think being really successful fundraiser and mm -hmm. being part of the organization that had, you know, had that happen. Um, being a mom of two amazing kids. Um, and being somebody that raised their hand for a foster kid and, mm -hmm. you know, taking a stand for her as a person who makes a difference. Mm -hmm. and for her successes and just saying i am i am a business owner and i have something that is of value and trust me i'm going to mm -hmm. give this to you and i'm going to light your world up i'm going to make sure you have an inspired life and i want to contribute and mm -hmm. yeah that i think that's it no i i, I love that and for everyone who is listening, right? Because they can't see us right now. We'll have video someday. Um, it's it's emotional, right? To talk about what, when we feel powerful. And like, I, I feel it right now as you've been sharing and I can see like the impact is having on your face. And what what is it? What is there that maybe can guide people when they're trying to discover their power? What's that link between how you feel emotionally and and where you find your power or the impact your power has back on you do you think i think leaning into the emotion actually like you feel it you're feeling something there's something there that is calling to you there's something there mm -hmm. that wants out and you know needs exploration it's like mm -hmm. you're moved touched and inspired girlfriend get it on let's do it you know <laughs> I, th yeah. I yeah when you notice something's moving for you like let's dive into that mm -hmm. and not to be afraid right if it if it is making you no be not... afraid and do it anyway mm -hmm. <laughs> that's great what I book <laughs> I used to write these emails and I used to read them over and I always read them over should I send that oh my gosh is it right blah, 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 blah. my text everything I'm like rereading and then now I'm just like I'm not sure if that's right and I send it <laughs> <laughs> instead of writing about it you just do it just mm -hmm. send it, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And being emotional isn't bad, right? Like yeah. if, if something moves you to the point where you get teary eyed, good. That means it's deeper. <laughs> yeah. Which has happened a lot this last week during Thanksgiving. Like I mm -hmm. noticed I start talking and I'm like, Ooh, I have to catch myself, you know, Ooh, what's that going on? You know, there's a lot of emotions here in this last, yeah. well, six months, but, um, this last week I just noticed a lot of, uh, out of right under the surface, heartfelt stuff. Well, I noticed for myself for a long time, I wouldn't talk about things that really mattered to me with a lot of people because I didn't want to get emotional. Mm -hmm. I didn't want the, like, you know, I was one of those people who was like, crying is so stupid. And so like, <laughs> I would avoid those things. And now I like, I know it's a sign that like, it really matters to me. Like, even if I'm talking to Jesse about something, if I get teary eyed, it's because no, this is real. This is actually really important to me, or it really means something to me. Mm -hmm. um, it has nothing to do with being weak or being too girly or any of those things. It's just like, no, this is real. Like this is, this is something of significance to me, even if it seems silly to somebody else. Right. Right. And I think leaning into those times is like, that's where you find yourself. That's where the authenticity yes. and the, the value of being alive and, you know, why it's worth getting up every day. Right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's so many people that I um, have come across, especially in this past year, who either um, are recent graduates or young people that are really trying to find what that purpose is for them. Yeah. Or it's people who have been kind of knocked off what they thought their game plan was and are, are trying to reconnect with what their purpose is. Um, it's also why we started as our first month in Thrive membership with Clarity. Um, but having, you know, you are someone who has such wisdom for people who are 
trying to reconnect with their purpose, what advice would you give them? Wow, that's great. Um, I think like asking yourself, what as an eight-year-old, what did you love to do? Because mm-hmm. oftentimes it's the same thing. It may be packaged a little different, but I think it's very similar. There's some dream mm-hmm. that that kid had that wants to get lived, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and like going there, I doing a little exploration, writing journals, drawing pictures. I you know I don't know what it is, but there's there's some some way that that manifests itself, and mm-hmm. the the authenticity is right there. I think. I think so too. And even for people who maybe when they were a kid wasn't a good time, like they didn't, it didn't just occur to them as a hopeful period of their life. I, I still think that there is whatever you felt in that moment will give you insight into what your calling is. So whether your eight year old you was happy or eight year old you was struggling, mm-hmm. there's something in that space that's going to point you. It's like a flashlight. Mm-hmm. It's going to shine on something that you're that that is going to call to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, um, I was just talking to my son who, um, you know, when he goes through things, and, you know, he'll come and we'll have a conversation about things. And I said, you know, maybe that you have to get through this stuff that's not so great to get to where you're going. So it's not mm-hmm. like bad, bad stuff. It's like good, bad stuff because it's going to get you where you got to go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and pressing in. Uh, and finding your purpose and finding what's up and what's so for yourself. Well, I know from my own experience, finding your purpose doesn't mean that things get easy. Yeah. It's not like a, not that it gets bad, but it's more um, finding your purpose isn't uh, the same thing as having like the good life. Like they're not, (laughs) they're not one and the same. They can be eventually. Um, But I feel like sometimes there's a lot of, there's still a lot of stuff in that space when you especially start on that path of things to work through, things to grow into, challenges that you need so that you can really be the leader that you're going to be on the other side. Yeah. I mean, being the leader and like mm-hmm. actually just saying yes to things, mm-hmm. just pushing the button and sending it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just do it. Is that what the, mm-hmm. you know Nike says? Just do it. Yes. Yeah. hundred percent. Um, so we ask everyone on the podcast where you put yourself in the powerful lady scale, zero being average everyday human and 10 being the most powerful lady possible. Where would you rank yourself today? And where do you think you rank yourself on average? Hmm. Let's see. Let's see. I'm, I would say like an eight, like I'm like, uh, but I have like, there's so many plans that I have for my company and what I want to do and what I want to accomplish. So mm-hmm. I think I'm just, I'm an eight for the the scale that I'm at now, but then I'm mm-hmm. getting a new scale as soon yeah. as possible, <laughs> you know, cause I'm, <laughs> I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to bent a new scale, um, mm-hmm. for myself. And I, I love that. Um, not being able to have, not stopping, just be able to invent something new and get on another scale. It's great. No, I love that. I love the putting the new scale into effect. Yeah. Um, you are an avid reader, as I am. We, we are a little bit obsessed with the books that we get to have in our lives. Um, you recommended um, Where the Crawdads Sing and Educated, which have been two of my favorite books this year. Um, how have books changed your life? And is there a book that you recommend to everyone that's listening? So I love, love, love to read. And um, I think, Kara, I think I, I shared this with you, but I'm taking a wine education class, a WSET three, level three to um, to uh, learn more about wine. And it's it's all encompassing. It's all I read right now. So I'd say Argentina right now. But <laughs> <laughs> that's my, my reading list is just this textbook. It's just this uh, unbelievable. But uh, I love the two books that you recommend that I recommended to you. Those were really mm-hmm. great. Um, there is, um, there's another book that I read right before that it's called the choice and it's a story of a, um, Holocaust survivor and it is phenomenal, incredibly moving and the struggle and the, the, the talk about, she got a new scale, boy, this lady is unbelievable. Um, mm-hmm. she's still alive. She lives down, I think in La Jolla now. And I've been on a podcast with her and she's just, she's just the bomb, badass mm-hmm. lady. And um, what she went through and her story is incredible. You have to read that. I would highly recommend 
that. Okay, uh, great, awesome. great, great for this season too. Yeah. Um, and I know that you are a woman who has lots of other powerful and inspiring women in your life. How have the women and your circle of girlfriends impacted your life and, um, you know, either supported you or guided you to who you are today? Wow. I, um, I have this, uh, one friend and I call her my person. She's my person. (laughs) And, you know, if I'm ever off or if something, something's up with me, I get on the phone immediately. I call her, I say, blah, blah, blah what's going on. I get coached and I get back on my bike and I ride, I get going mm-hmm. again. And I think that's one of the most important things in life is to have the person. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, just my tight, close friends, you know, especially through, um, this last few months, you know, you really circle your wagon and you find out who's important and, you know, you, mm-hmm. you, you have that connection and it's just been, phenomenal who's in my circle right now. I'm blessed to have incredible people that have support me in all ways. And I'm, I'm just, I, you know, I have no words for the girlfriend, um, conversation. Yeah. Um, so now that I'm sure you have lots of admirers after, um, today's episode, um, <laughs> What are your final words of wisdom or encouragement to everyone that's listening who is hungry to take on a life bigger than their maybe dare to dream and really want to step into living their life with intention? Wow. Uh, call me. Let's do it together. <laughs> I mean, I want to be a witness, man. I just love what I do. I want to be there for people. I want them to be successful and I want them to have a life they love and be inspired and have a home that reflects who they are. And when they come Mm -hmm. home, they get reminded of who they are every day and what they're up to. And they just get empowered. Like they have this amazing life. Uh, That's what I wish for everybody. And and in order to start that process, you know, get get the book, get Marie Kondo's book, read it, Mm -hmm. read it, see what's possible out of just like decluttering. It's just phenomenal. You got to do it. (laughs) start the process. Mm -hmm. Take the first step. Well, thank you for spending your Sunday with me. It's been such a pleasure as always. Thank you for finally being a yes and um, being a guest. I'm sure I will have you on again in the future since we have so many things that um, we find important and would love to talk about and share with people. Um, But you really are so lovely and so special to me. So thank you so much. Kara, I can't thank you enough. I can't thank you enough for your friendship your coaching, your unbelievable, you just are so empowering to me. And I just super appreciate who you are, not only for me, but for the entire Powerful Ladies Thrive community, of which I'm a new member, by the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so I'm super excited to participate in that with you. But you are mm-hmm. a shining light in this world right now. Every entrepreneur needs you. And with you by their side, it's like there's nothing that can't happen. So you know, shout out to you. Love you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. I hope you all got something out of today's episode. Nancy is one of those magical humans. If you're ready to take on transforming your life into the life of your dreams, definitely book a consultation with her to see what's possible for you. Completing the KonMari process with the professional and even more so with Nancy is a totally different experience than doing it on your own. Things are revealed when you're doing it with her. Things move and you really feel a new space and a new life coming into existence. To connect, support, follow, and schedule an appointment with Nancy, you can visit nancyeatoninspiredliving.com or find her on Instagram at nancyeatoninspiredliving. All the links plus more notes you can find at thepowerfulladies.com forward slash podcast and see it all in this episode's show notes. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Powerful Ladies podcast. There are so many ways you can get involved and get supported with fellow Powerful Ladies. First, subscribe to this podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts. Give us a five-star rating and leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Follow us on Instagram at Powerful Ladies. Join the Powerful Ladies Thrive Collective. This is the place where Powerful Ladies connect, 
level up, and learn how to thrive in business and life. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page, and of course, visit our website, thepowerfulladies.com. I'd like to thank our producer, composer, and audio engineer, Jordan Duffy. Without her, this wouldn't be possible. You can follow her on Instagram at Jordan K. Duffy. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode. Until then, I hope you're taking on being powerful in your life. Go be awesome and up to something you love. <laughs>